Hi handsome and welcome to my ninth video. We're all getting older. I know, that sounds kind of depressing. We no longer have all the time in the world to dedicate to just playing video games. Now we have these pesky little things called jobs and children that take all the time away from our hands. But even despite these limitations, or maybe because of them, you are still looking for a new game to play, an MMO at that. A game you can sink your teeth into and just relax in. The only problem is that you don't really know which MMO will respect your time the most. And while there might be other people telling you to play their favorite MMORPG, I am here to tell you why Black Desert Online might actually be the perfect casual game for you if you have a busy life. Ok, let's start with the smaller reasons and progressively move upwards. My first reason is that the game has no mandatory subscription. This has often happened to me with like Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft, where I wanted to play the game and I decided to subscribe and I played the game for like a week, maybe two weeks, and then either something happened in life or I moved on to other games or just friends wanted to play something else or whatever. And then two weeks later I decided to play the game again and I couldn't because the subscription ran out so I kind of felt like those two weeks that I didn't play were kind of wasted money. BDO has optional subscriptions so this feeling can still be there however they are really optional they don't lock any content behind them is just quality of life that you are buying. It can still be there but if you are one of the people who just want to play a game you know you just want to log in every now and then you can and I think not, not having a mandatory subscription and not having to pay the 10-15 euros or or dollars to access the game for a week or two is a good enough reason for some people. Since we talked about subscriptions, let's quickly touch on the pay to win elements in the game because I'm sure most of you will want to hear about them. This is very personal, so I did not put this as a point for the game, but if you are someone who really dislikes any type of pay to win in MMOs, then BDO might not be the game for you, I'm just gonna put it out there, but neither might any other MMO because let's be real, all MMOs nowadays have some sort of pay to win in them. But that's a topic for another video. For the rest of you, BDO pay to win could be described with it is not your enemy, but it can be your friend. And what I mean by this is that griefing and like open world PvP is not really a thing anymore outside of the Arsha servers, which you have to consciously enter. And most forms of PvP are either equalized, so this will be your 3v3 arena of solar, or they are capped. So they have a limit of gear score and stats that you can reach after which you don't get anything. The uncapped PvP is still in the game, but it's been relegated to like high tier node wars and castle sieges, the Arsha server and the red battlefield, which is like the PvP arena for the game. And the guild versus guild is also uncapped as far as I know. I have not done it, so don't quote me on that. Now that is why it's not your enemy. Now why can it be your friend? It's very simple. It's buying in-game currency, right? So you can buy costumes and sell them on the Sutra market and you will get silver. Now, Am I saying you should do this? No, but it's a thing if you really feel like it, if you really want to, it's a possibility. The other option you can do with your real money, which I would recommend even less, is turn them into ground stones and then just gamble with enhancements. That's again a topic for another day. I would just like to say that pay to win does exist in the game, but it's not like you will just get destroyed by random endgame players with endgame gear or that you you will just not be able to enjoy the game and if anything it can make your progression a little bit faster if you really feel like you need the extra notch. One thing I forgot to mention is that every single content update, every single expansion is completely free of charge so once you purchase the game you never have to buy anything again. Obviously there are going to be cosmetics and other like pay for convenience, pay for wins items added to the shop but the base game as well as everything else that you can do in the game which includes like new zones, new mechanics, new updates, everything else that gets added is completely free and you can do that whenever you feel like it. Those are the financial reasons why you might want to pick the game up out of the way. Now let's talk about the game itself. My second reason for why BDO might be the game for you if you have a busy life is that there are very few time gates in the game and by time gates I mean like daily quests, weekly quests, raid ID logins etc. Now this is not to say that they do not exist, they do. Most notably you have like the setting dailies and 
and weeklies and then you also have the boss blitz which resets every week which i also made a video on on this channel earlier this week so go check it out you might like it shameless plug by the way now why did i put it here then it's simple those weeklies and dailies that we have in bdo they are not that important they do not block any kind of progression behind them when i played final fantasy 14 this was my main problem with the game and it's that it limits the amount of tombstones that you get end game gear with to 450 per week where your average gear costs like 500 to 850 or 825 so you need to wait two weeks before you can get one upgrade and, it, and if you miss one week there is no way of you getting them back and I really dislike this system that's why I kind of stopped playing the game same goes for raid IDs right if you go to a raid and no item for you drop you still cannot go again because now you are locked in for that raid for that week and you need to wait another week and if you miss that raid the next week good luck you are behind for the rest of the expansion or for the rest of the raid tier or un until everyone else gets uh, best in slot but even then like people might be less inclined to raid if they already have the best in slot gear it's always going to be hard with time gated system which is why i don't like them and which is i think bdo can be a good option for you if you want something that either does not have time gates at all which bdo really doesn't or the time gates that are there are not that important and they will just reward you with some extra silver this goes into my next point which is that bdo is a sandbox mmo which means that you can do whatever you feel like usually sandbox just means open world pvp but in bdo's case it's not that case not as much anymore so what it means in bdo is that whatever you do you will always be progressing your character whether that's fishing gathering killing mobs even pvp now gives you money there will always be a way to progress your character and it's up to you to decide what you want to do and how you want to progress whenever you log in it's not up to the system telling you that you need to do these dailies and these weeklies so just go into the world and do what you feel like doing. This goes into my next point, which is that BDO doesn't force you to catch up to other people to experience the content in the game. Since there are no raid tiers and very little group content, you can progress your character at your own pace and set your own goals. And of course, these goals can change at any moment. So if you feel like doing gathering today, grinding tomorrow, and then PvP, Arena, Solar the next week, you can do all of them and the progress will still stay there. BDO really gives you the freedom to just do whatever whenever you feel like it and i think that this is a great thing for people who just don't have the time to invest into a game where you are on a constant treadmill and you need to clear the current content the current rate tiers by the time the next content update drops speaking of rates since video does not have any and is instead focused mostly on single player grinding you are not reliant on other people in your progression and overall gameplay by this i really mean that you don't have to fit your schedule around other other people in a static group or you don't have to try your luck in a party finder with random people this also means that those people are not reliant on you in their progression which means that you will encounter less toxic people on average and you won't have to deal with as much toxicity because like let's be honest most toxicity in mmos is always found in raids whether it's static drama i just want to let you know but I am so fucking happy that I never have to fucking raid with your dumbass ever fucking again. You are the worst fucking player I have ever played with and the audacity to fucking make fun of us on your stream and not to our fucking faces is fucking low. Do you, you understand what? what fucking low is? You're low. You're lower than fucking dirt. Your fucking viewers are a bunch of fucking casuals that have to feel bad for you because you're just a fucking dog shit player. You understand me? Bro, because what the fuck? You're fucking dumbass little casual. Oh, fucking, if she calls the wipe. I don't give two flying fucks. You are the worst fucking greediest fucking player I have ever dealt with. And you say fucking over here, your previous static said I was greedy. Yes, you fucking are. Because you never hold. You make everyone hold for your dumbass. And you what? expect us to fucking pay for your shit when you don't even know how to pay, like, play your fucking class. I ain't fucking been playing this game for eight fucking years and it doesn't show it, Inoko. I am tired of your shit. You don't take criticism. 
you don't fucking take advice. Every time we give you advice, you pull the stupid, I know, but I did this, I know. You know how many times we fucking wipe to dots because of your stupid ass? Because you don't know how to fucking get knocked back correctly? And you have the audacity to fucking laugh about us on your stream? I am so glad that you're not going to be uh, raiding with us in 6.2. And I fucking hope you know that no one wanted to raid with you in 6.2 either because you're a dog shit player. Fucking worse than me and I'm a one trick. I hope your stupid fucking stream enjoys watching your casual ass fucking gameplay. That's all you fucking deserve. I am so fucking happy I never have to hear your voice ever again because this was the worst fucking raiding experience since we started in Savage and I knew how fucking shitty of a player you were because of that shit. I'm so fucking tired of your bullshit. Get your shit together and take your head out of your fucking ass. Or it's just random people being mean to each other. The group content in BDO, whatever small amount that is, benefits from the game not featuring the Holy Trinity, so this is your tank healer DPS. So it doesn't really matter what class you are, unless you play shy. In which case, it's like you are the hottest girl in class and you could free pass to everything and everyone just wants your number. So if you really want to be invited to every party, play shy. One thing that I almost did not put into this video, if it wasn't for Atman's Gold's reaction to a new world discussion popping on my YouTube feed is that BDO does not have servers in the traditional sense where you just pick a server and create a character and the character is tied to that server. It has one big mega server for each region so think of kind of like Final Fantasy data centers and then you can hop between the channels of the server freely whenever, wherever, however many times you want to. Everything is tied to the mega server so your center market, your storage, your workers, the player base itself, everything is tied to the server. That's a nice feature on its own. It like helps you when you are getting griefed or when you want to grind a certain spot but it's already taken, etc. But why I am putting it here is that often with these traditional servers, like World of Warcraft, like New World for example, what happens is that the game gets a certain player base and especially at the start, so this is why it was New World, the servers get full everybody is just happy to play the game but over time people start leaving the game and if the developer doesn't do anything about the servers some servers will just become complete ghost towns where there's like 15 people online so you can't do dungeons you can't do pvp you can't do raiding the market house is completely dead you cannot do anything basically and you can only either pay real money to transfer the character from one server to a more popular one or you can create a new character all together on the more popular server hoping that it does not become a ghost town in the future either and nobody wants to do that right nobody wants to have their character held for ransom and nobody wants to create a new one just because they made a decision that turned out to be wrong like half a year a year later this is why i think this is a really good thing for the longevity of the game and especially if you are someone who does not have that much time so maybe you don't play every single day or you just play whenever you feel like it might as well mention this now because I'm sure some people would will say this but I don't think Black Desert is going to die anytime soon the game is already going on 10 years old this year so if it would, would die it would have died already Pearl Abyss is doing its best efforts in improving the new player experience and the onboarding experience so I think if anything it's going to go slightly up now of course BDO is a niche title within a niche genre like Beryl MMOs are kind of niche nowadays compare World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy to Fortnite and League of Legends and you will know exactly what I mean but no other game can dethrone it from this niche we've had Swords of Legends online we've had like Lost Ark we've had New World all of these games that were supposed to take video space and they never did and I don't think any game will and maybe if that game arrives we still have the copium take that Crimson Desert whenever it comes out is on the same engine so maybe Black Desert will get an engine update and that can improve the combat and the graphics even more than they are already and if you look at BDO this is always the first things that people tell you the combat is amazing the graphics are amazing considering the game is 10 years old that's pretty insane we also had the remastered mode right so that all, all already improved the graphics as well so I don't think any of these superficial let's call them superficial because that's what they are reasons are what's going to kill the game another good thing about BDO and why I think it's a good choice if you don't have that much time are the AFK activities 
is in the game, so you can make money when you're not even playing it. AFK activities are mostly life skills. There are also passive income sources, which are mostly from your workers that you can employ and they will bring you resources or make you stuff. But when it comes to the AFK activities, these are mostly life skills and they come in two forms. I'm gonna call them the semi-AFK activities. So this is your cooking alchemy processing, which you can do for maybe up to an hour at a time and then you need to check the computer and reset so maybe if you are making dinner or whatever taking care of the kids you can do this and then we have the what i'm gonna call the overnight activities and this is your horse training and fishing and these you can do for up to 10 to 15 hours i want to say so obviously the money you make from this is not going to be mind-blowing it's not going to be that much but still it's going to be more than zero so if you want to make some extra money when you are working and you don't care your computer is going to be running the entire time you can definitely use this and i think it's a good point for why you might want to pick up video okay in case you somehow were not persuaded by all of these reasons then i still have three more and these are what i would consider the biggest reasons why i think that video is the best game for you if you don't have that much time to invest into a game we talked a little bit about raids and the way raiding works and that you don't need to catch up in video etc now let's talk about one of the best reasons why i think bdo is a great choice for you if you don't have that much time to invest into an mmo but you would like to play one anyway and that is that gear in black desert loses value incredibly slow and what i mean by this is let's take final fantasy for comparison so in ff14 if you have a raid tier let's say the best in slot from that raid tier is 630 gear score now six to eight months later a new raid tier is going to come out a new savage raid tier and this will introduce crafted gear that anyone can make and sell on the market to other players and this crafted gear will be 635 gear score already invalidating every ounce of effort you put into obtaining the best in slot from the previous tier and all you are left with is basically transmog with bdo it works kind of differently because you don't really replace your items you upgrade them into the next tier so for example if you start a new character you start what is called a season character and it gives you a full set of Tuvala armor. After you upgrade that Tuvala armor to the maximum tier, it transforms into boss tier armor, which is just called boss armor, and you can upgrade this again to the maximum, and after that you get an enhancement system, which is called the Kafras enhancement, and you need to get a bunch of Kafras stones from mobs around the world, and you put them into the armor, and every single level of Kafras increases how many Kafras stones it needs, but it also increases the stats of the armor, and after you get a certain level of Kafras enhancement in the armor, you can take the, that armor and another reagent from a mob zone to transform that into the, what is currently the best in slot armor set, the Slumbrick Origin armor. And this you can once again enhance to the maximum, but the chances of that happening are very low, so not even that many endgame players have the maximum enhancement on even one Slumbering Origin armor piece, let alone all four. Now, those are just armors. With weapons, it's kind of the same story, except we don't have the Slumbering Origin weapons yet. They are scheduled to come this summer in Korea, so maybe we'll get them a little bit later. Accessories are kind of different because it's more horizontal progression, so you have a choice. Do you want the ring that gives a good amount of attack power but not defense power? Do you want an uh, accessory that gives less attack power but more defense power? Do you want accessories that give some other stats like accuracy or evasion or damage to specific types of monsters etc you can always choose and you are basically choosing the right accessory for the right situation with the exception of very end game pve where the boreka accessories are going to be better than the other ones but getting them is going to be much much harder than the other ones as well so there is that in mind and this is why i say that gear loses value extremely slowly because not only only is new gear introduced into the game rather slowly we don't get like an entire raid set we usually get like an item or two per year and if you get a good gear you will have that gear for a very long time so for example if you were to get a pen deboreka necklace right now who knows when you are going to be replacing that I, I don't even want to guess because i think it's going to take years before we get another tier above the Boreka. So that should give you enough of 
have an understanding of the gearing in BDO and why I think it's very good if you don't have that much time because I really didn't like it when I quit like FF14 or World of Warcraft and then I came back for the new raid tier and I realized that whatever gear I had I could just throw away and I had to buy a new raid crafted gear just so I could raid again and this is the same for many games which have raids. I just think this is a good reason why, one of the best reasons why, but not the best. Let's get into the next point and my second best reason why you should play this game if you don't have that much time and it's the content of the game and especially what I mean by this is that not all new content added into the game is aimed at endgame. I would even say that most content isn't aimed at endgame players because if you look at the past releases we had the Magnus quest line which was not endgame, we had the Land of the Morning Light which was not endgame, we had the Mountain of Eternal Winter which was kind of both. We had the Calpheon Elvia, okay, that was mostly endgame. We had Ulukita, kind of both. We also had the Balenos overhaul, the, the questline overhaul. I also made a video on that, you can watch that as well. That's only new players. We are getting a continuation of that in the Hydel questline overhaul, so that's new player as well. And we are getting the Land of the Morning Light Part 2, which is also aimed mostly at new players. So all of that is aimed at newer players, with the exception of like Ulukita uh, zones and like Calpheon. Elvia zones which are kind of like grind spots. I would say that you can go and experience a lot of this content yourself and even all the content that there is will be new to you and it is still going to be viable to do because like we talked about with the sandbox everything you do gives you silver and silver is ubiquitous. You can use it for everything. There is not any sort of reputation grind that you have to do or the tombstones grinds from Final Fantasy 14 that you have to do. You just have silver and everything in the game you can buy with silver. Everything you do in the game that gives you silver is automatically progression for you. So if you unlock new grind spots it's always going to be new content for you and by the time you get to the current end game of course it might not be end game at that time but it's still going to be new to you and it's not going to matter that other people some other people by the way a very small amount of people are going to be doing better content because you are going to be doing your is going to be relevant still and you can do it for uh, however long you want to because it's a sandbox mmo and it doesn't matter it's, it's just your journey which brings me neatly to my last and best reason why you should play this game if you don't have that much time. My biggest reason is that in Black Desert the journey is the destination. And what I mean by this is that how many times have you heard that the MMO that you want to play really starts at endgame? How many times have you heard that you need to reach the max level to start playing the game for real? How many times have you heard that if you really want to experience as an MMO, you need to get into the raiding scene. How many times have you heard something like that? Well, in BDO, that is not the case. You can set your own goals, you can play the game at your own pace, and it is going to be your journey, and as long as you enjoy that journey, it does not matter what you do, because everything you do is going to get you somewhere, and it's only up to you where you want to end up, and what you want to do in the game, and I think that is absolutely beautiful because you are not tied to what the game tells you to do you are in the actual sandbox and if you want to build castles if you want to dig underground if you want to go around the playground and destroy everyone else's castles you can go and do that and nobody can stop you you are your own lord you are your own man you can do what you want and that is why you should start playing this game now because the sooner you start setting out on your goal the better it's going to be for you so go ahead download the game go and play it and tell me if i was right or not all right handsome those have been my 10 reasons why you should play bdo if you don't have that much free time to invest into an mmo one thing i should say is that it was pointed out to me when i was making this video by a friend that a lot of these reasons could be actually 
flipped on their head and used as reasons why you should not play the game. I am obviously biased for the game, but if you would like me to make a video talking about those 10 reasons why you should not play BDO, not just if you don't have a, a lot of time, but in, in general, then do let me know and I will do my best to make that. The next video on the channel is going to be Story Mode Episode 3, it's looking at the story of Calpheon, so do stay tuned for that. I'm not really sure when it's going to come out because I have some other responsibilities I need to take care of first, but you don't have to worry about those. Outside of that, please join my Discord. I'm very lonely and I've been there alone for the last, I think, five days. So somebody join, please. Let's talk. Let's be friends. Yeah, outside of that, like and subscribe. Do tell me if you agree with these points or not and enjoy your grind.